The ability to store and manage groups of objects or groups of items within C Sharp can be handled through the use of collections. C Sharp uses the base class library within the .NET framework. And within the base class library, we find non-generic type collections and generic collections. The collections that we have available to us in the .NET framework provide some specific functionality or even just general functionality for us to use. As an example, we have an array list, which is a collection type that allows us to create and use a resizable array of objects. If we look at the standard array within C Sharp, it's a fixed size. We declare it. We typically assign values to it at the time we declare it, or we give it a fixed size and then we can add values to it later. But we can never go beyond the size of the initial configuration of that array. The array list is a resizable value that lets us work with resizing the array dynamically as we go through the process of adding it. So in this example, the array list has nothing included in it. We haven't specified anything at all for size of the array, but we can go our list dot add, and then we can go ahead and we can add values in here as we see fit. We can also add string values in here if we want to just because that's the type of the array list. It just supports objects or generic objects, so it allows us to do that. Stack is another example of an array, but this has a very specific implementation. We use the push method to add values onto the arrays, and we can push a second value onto the array. And again, this can be a string value if we want it to be a string value because it's just storing generic objects onto the stack itself and it's perfectly fine. We can go ahead and um, execute some other methods on here. So we've got the ability to peek. And if we do a peek method, what that means is basically, let me see what's at the top of my stack, in which case it would be this value string because it was the last item pushed onto it. And we could do my stack.pop, which is just a generic method that removes it. So it would take string off and leave us with only 32 on here. So this is considered a last in first out method or type of a collection. A queue works a little bit similar to the stack. It's a first in, first out. If you've stood in line at the motor vehicle branch or something along those lines, you've been given a pretty good introduction to a queue. The people who are there first are the people who get served first. And in this case, we can do my queue dot. The method to add something is in queue. And we can, again, just add generic objects to this as, as we see fit. And we can say my queue dot DQ actually removes an item from the list itself. So we can specify that and then it would actually remove the first item from the list. Sorted lists are a way to create a list of objects that allow you to build items into the list itself. And then if we were to put sort list.add and we were to put the number 23 as an example in here and then we added another value to the sort list and this time here we put the value 1 then internally what that sorted list is going to do is store the values as 1 is the first and 23 is the second value that would be stored in. So it, it actually goes through the process of sorting the list. This one here actually is kind of interesting because a sort list is a item that relies on a key and then an object value. So as you can see, the overloaded list, if we were to add 1 here and then put 23 is the value that we were going to put in here, and then we put two as the key to gain access to the second. So a key, consider this similar to looking items up in a dictionary. This key becomes the index to find the value that we're looking for, and the value is the data that we actually store in here. We have generic versions of those. Please go ahead and look at the generics lesson to see what it is that we're doing with the data types within the angle brackets. The reason we put it here is just to show you that we can have generic versions of the stack in the queue and the sorted list. And again, they're strongly typed. So this particular stack called int stack, we would only be able to store integer variables in here. The queue would be a character queue. We would only be able to store single characters in that specific queue itself. And then on the sorted list, we have indicated that the key would be a string value and the value itself would be a string value. And that's all that we would be able to store in there. A very quick introduction to collections within the .NET framework. What you've seen up here in terms of the methods that you can use on stack and queue and sorted lists, including even the array list, these are the same for their counterparts in the generic collection versions. So for stack, we would have a push and a pop for the generic version. The queue, we would have an end queue and DQ and sort list. We would have the add method. Again, the only difference with the generics is that we are strongly typed on the objects that we're going to put into those collections. 
Again, great use of different collection types for storing and managing groups of objects within your applications.